Today we're looking at the DSO-138 oscilloscope. A uh, little background on myself before we start. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer, uh, and in a former lifetime, several years back, I actually designed high-end digital oscilloscopes. So I know a lot about these things, and so when I saw this thing for $20 shipped, to assemble, I, I just had to try it out. Now this uses the STM32 uh, Cortex-M3, I believe. Uh, we'll certainly look at that later. Right now we're just unboxing it. Now most of these kits you find online are not assembled. You actually have to assemble them. But this one I actually found, <clears throat> and it says it's welded, which I figured meant it was probably soldered together, and it turns out it is. Now again, I paid $20 for this, and I bought it two days ago, and it was sent next day air saver. So they must have spent half that price, $10, on air saver. I don't actually know what that costs, but I know when I ship something overnight, it ain't cheap. So we're gonna unbox this. And for 20 bucks, man, that's excellent packaging. It's got an ESD shield. It's got a uh, cable in here. You know, the rubber band quality is meh, but the cable itself actually seems pretty decent. Even if I don't use this as oscilloscope, hey, you know, 20 bucks for a little BNC to double alligator, I mean, it's expensive, but got some instructions here. You know, I actually read the instructions. Uh, look, we even have a cover on the screen. Now, the screen's not attached well, which is fine. Um, I would recommend just taking some VHB and slapping that down. Now the cool thing about this, uh, because it uses the Cortex M3, I mean that's just a standard microprocessor. Make sure they have these pins lined up correctly, yeah. So we'll we'll pull the screen off here. Gosh, that, for $20, my goodness. This is a, a nice little demo board. Okay, so yeah, we have a couple little guys there, standard matrix there. So that's just a screen, man. 20 bucks, look at that, I got a screen, and I have my own little dev board too. So yeah, they are using here, this is the, uh, it's probably a counterfeit, uh, if I had to guess. But yeah, the 32F103. So uh, yeah, it's a decent little um, microprocessor. Uh, they've got an eight megahertz oscillator on it there. A um, bunch of electrolytic caps. What did they actually have a real ADC here? Uh, TL084C, no, that looks, I'd have to look what that is. Um, not, a, not an ADC though, I'm pretty sure. So we get USB, which is where power comes from. And then we have our single channel here. So you're not gonna get uh, any kind of uh, channel mixing. You're not gonna be able to gather multiple pieces of data at once. Now, uh, I did notice there's only three feet. So that, that's just a one-off thing, whatever. I mean, I don't, I don't care at all. I'll just throw another foot on there. I'll probably throw better feet on here anyway. A uh, little rubber padded feet work better. Um, but gosh, I wouldn't, $20 is, is very cheap. Look, they've got a UART here that you can use, uh, that they, they wired out. They've got some more switches here. No, this is a 3-3 digital out, uh, clock, ground. They even labeled RX and TX. So man, I got an oscilloscope plus whatever, you know, whatever else I can eke out of that thing. They, they have little taps here for 3-3 three, three, and 5. Uh, I, bet, I bet you this is a, a well, there's no, I was gonna say it's power supply, but you know, I was thinking they, they need a negative rail. Uh, I bet you this is only a single quadrant, so it'll only do you know zero to five volts input. Uh, but heck, we'll see. I mean, look, no, look, they have uh, multipliers here, which are, yeah, so yeah, this is five volts, two volts. So right now it's five volts, two volts, one volt, and then this would be 0.1 volts, 0.01, 10 millivolts, maybe. That's what I'm thinking. And look, they even have a uh, ground, so you can do a ground input, AC reference, and uh, the AC coupled and DC coupled. Um, so that's not a feature I expected to see. These switches are kind of crummy. I, I would make sure you're pushing them towards the bottom so you don't break them off. That's gonna be probably a common complaint. Now they are through hole, but they are uh, 10 pin through hole. So unless you actually have a hot air bed uh, or at least a heat gun, you're gonna have a hard time getting those out, uh, ripping stuff off the pad. Uh, some kind of LDO here, uh, probably to regulate to 3.3. Most of these uh, STI processors are 3.3, whereas the USB is five. So this is probably just a little LDO. Maybe we can pull that up there. Uh, here's a little inductors. Um, 
and your backing diode there. It's a little transistor there. So it looks like they actually, check this out, they do have a, a negative power rail, it looks like. They're using a transistor. Okay, sure, they probably should be using a FET, or they just have it a little mislabeled here. Uh, and they're probably controlling it with the actual uh, STM. They probably just have a pulse width modulated output and uh, you know some kind of feedback. So it looks like they do have their negative rail here. They are generating a one kilohertz 3.3 volt, and they, they pen that out as well, which is nice. So you can touch that. It'd be nice if they put a little two pin header there, I'll, of course, add it. Okay, so there is a DC input here. So you need nine volts on the input. Uh, we'll look at that, uh, you know, some buttons here, triggered, I uh, got your trigger warning here for all the people who just can't handle life. Alright, so let's plug the screen back in, and uh, like I said, I do always read the manual. Gosh, 20 bucks, I don't even care if this works. Like, as long as, as long as it, it turns on, I don't care how bad the scope is, because look, this is an entire test platform with the rails you want and a clock. With, with an analog input, and of course, they're just connecting this up to the analog to digital converter on the, on the STM, which supports my case that this is probably only zero to five volts, although they do have that gain stage. So rather than conjecture, let's look it up. We have a manual here. Oh, look at that. We're gonna go through all of what I just went through. So user manual, uh, one page user manual, that's great. I right, have look a little test paper. Hey, this is really well thought out. Soldering hints. Uh, okay, so this is as if it wasn't assembled. So someone else bought this kit here, assembled it for me. So, so be careful, you can buy this kit unassembled for the same price, $20. Right? This is the $20 assembled. Again, I did not assemble that. So, you know, they're talking about the tools you need to, to build it. So this is, this is not really the user's manual here. This is the assembly manual. But hey, this is great. Look, if you've never put a board together, Look, it's telling you uh, what a cathode is on a PCB, and you know what the resistor values are here. And look, it tells you that the you know what the positive is. You know, the longer lead goes to the square pad. These are great things. Uh, the pinheads. If you know, I wouldn't recommend if you buy the un unassembled one. I wouldn't recommend it as a first project for somebody, uh, particularly because of the uh, quad flat pack there, the the QFP, the um, that's a TQFP. Anyway, um, the, the STI chip is a bit small, you need probably to reflow that. You could use a heat gun. But look, everything else nearly is, uh, man, I can't believe they don't stick that screen down. For $20, uh, not a complaint, whatever. Uh, I'll be able to do that. The next scene, I won't be flopping around. So yeah, there's packages are similar, similar to not mix them up. Look at that, like, tell me who knows, knows nothing about it. By the end of assembling this thing, they know what a BNC connector is. They're familiar at least with slide switches. I wish they showed the schematic, but whatever. They got headers, transistors. Look, they get a you know they get a, a layman's introduction. Look, they a crystal, eight megahertz right there. Like sweet. I wish it said like, hey, the diode only lets current run through it one way, whatever. So test signal ring. Uh, and that's not what I thought it was. Interesting. Enough. So it is a test signal, but look, okay, you can actually see they actually short both pins are together. So you just drop a lead through there, and that way you can clip onto it. Yeah, fair enough. But where's the ground? <laughs> Yeah, so you get your test signal, but no ground. I mean, you were plugged into the ground right here, but your, your ground lead is just gonna be floating, whatever. I mean, this thing is super, it's not great. So look, and they, they mention here, yep, here's your minus voltage. So look, this is actually a plus or minus. Uh, so let's see, voltage references, uh, there's a nine volt, some kind of Zener reverse biased. 6.4 volts, okay, they're dividing it down. And then, okay, these are just test voltages they want, I see. These are the test voltages, sorry, you can't see that, that they want you to make sure are all there. Okay, I thought they had all these references, but look, you see you do have a plus and minus voltage, and of course, if, when I read that earlier, look, a, well, no, okay, AB minus and AB plus, plus or minus five volts are what those should be. So yeah, look, this is actually a bipolar oscilloscope for 20 bucks. Uh, that's insane. Okay, troubleshooting, so look, look. Oh, you built the whole thing, it didn't work? Sweet, you got a troubleshooting guy. All right, cool, awesome. Glad someone else assembled that for me. Oh my God, look at this. Here's this command. Or, no. Nope, just the PCB assembly. But hey, tells you every, I mean, it shows you pen one. I don't think there's any additional information since all this information is on the solder mask. I'm sorry, the stencil. 
Uh, look, there's actually information missing. So yeah, whatever. I mean, they, they do show the resistors. Uh, but you could probably get by without that. Eh, you know, you, maybe you need that. All right, cool. But again, ours is already assembled. How to use. Again, I haven't even turned this on and it was worth $20. <laughs> okay, so let's show the compensation here. There's your schematic. Dude, amazing. Okay, so this TL, it looks like is, this is a, some kind of selectable switch. I'm gonna take the screen back off again because I'm not done geeking out about this. All right, screen is off. Cool. So, we can uh, actually look at our input. Let's see if I can do these both. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Analog channel. So we have our BNC connector, which is right here. Oh, you can't see that. BNC connector, which is right here. Uh, we have a test point. Uh, it's AC coupled, connected straight to ground. Uh, I feel like that switches backwards. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, of course. So this switch right here, of course, is selecting the input. So you're selecting ground, AC, or DC there. So that's pretty common. Uh, you have some kind of, uh, yeah, tunable circuit. So look, they actually have uh, tunable pots here, so you can actually um, um, use the uh, compensation. So this is a 200, 100. This is a, um, probably a 10 to 1, eh, math, whatever. So you can see, uh, well, they have the gain here as well, I see. So yeah, they're always feeding through the DC there. There's their trimmer, so it's a 1.8, 200, uh, 20 to 1? No, nope, 10 to 1, of course, yep. So good, 10 to 1, that's what we want. So we have a 10 to 1 on the 0.1 range, and yeah, 100. Yeah, okay, so that they're doing the gain, and eh, okay. I mean, $20 oscilloscope, that's fine, whatever. Um, the issue here is they're actually applying the compensation and the gain at the same time, which is why they have two different trimmers. Yeah, that's pretty sketch. And in the 10 millivolt range, they use it all together. Hey, whatever, they've saved components. What is this other switch doing? Uh, CPL. Oh, so this is actually, it tells you which, um, so that you don't have to tell it, hey, I moved this switch to, you know, to here or to there or whatever, because it uses the other end of the switch to tell the microcontroller, uh, test point six, CPL select. Uh, that I am in, you know, whatever, five volts, minus five, uh, five volts ground or two and a half volts. Um, so they're using probably an analog channel on there as well. Hopefully they're not multiplexing that. Hopefully this has a couple of ADCs. Maybe they're using a Delta Sigma. And we'll, we'll look at that later. Okay, so from here we go to an op amp, which is just a unity buffer. So that's maybe this, yeah, probably that. Let's see, do we have other op amps? Yeah, one, two, three. There's probably a fourth one. Nope. Okay, well maybe they're only using three of them. So yeah, this is just an op amp. Um, so yeah, unity gain buffer, op amp. Uh, then they're doing a sensor two. Uh, is there, uh, yeah, their gain, so they're adding a times one, three or five multiplier. Uh, and then from there, they have a trigger. Okay, so their trigger is coming from here and you, I guess there's an output DAC here, and when the op amp gets higher, it triggers. Yeah, because that's on uh, an interrupt. Okay, this is great. All right, so there's our analog input there. It's very simple. We have selectable uh, attenuation, unity gain, um, op amp, selectable gain. Maybe you'd add, eh, whatever. You, this is gonna do higher than five volts. This is gonna do 50 volts, probably. Uh, you know. That's my guess. I haven't looked at the specs yet, sorry. All uh, right, so yeah, there's our three op amps there. We got a switch here to force a trigger probably. No, what does that do? That's the reset, okay. Oh, I'm over here now. LCD module. Okay, what do we have here? Uh, yeah, okay, we've got an extra data bus, software debug. So I can plug this into my little debugger and just take over and do whatever the heck I want. Here's some buttons. Uh, I guess, yeah, they're using the internal pull-ups on the microcontroller itself, whatever, saved four parts. Um, and as I mentioned here, I, I kind of forgot the end of the chain. Yeah, they're just plugging it into the one, an ADC channel. And 
yeah, they have two V-senses as well. So again, I hope they're not multiplexing the channel because that would suck because you get some aliasing, whatever. Okay, USB, uh, they got their 22 ohms. Uh, I guess, yeah, all the other stuff is built into this microprocessor. So they're just plugging it straight in to USB data minus and positive, um, okay. So power supply, power supply voltages cannot be higher than 12 volts. So they, on the board here, they say nine volts, uh, which is good and careful. So yeah, they're just using an LM78. <laughs> okay, whatever. So they get their five volt. This is, 7805 is, typically when the 7805 is on product, that's this guy right here. I'm pointing it to the corner. It's like, oh, that's a shoddy product or whatever. Someone didn't know how to use a switching power supply or whatever. What this means actually though, is you can put much higher than 12 volts in here. The problem is the power consumption might make it overheat, but there's actually a pretty decent heat block coming through the back right there. So the LM7805 will take, uh, you know, I don't know what the, the, the low profile one, the 7805, it's a T92 case. Um, I'm sure it will take 20 volts, but again, it might overheat. So uh, they have a diode here, so you can't reverse bias it. Look at that. Where's that diode? I don't see it here. It is D2. I'm gonna spend about two, yep, there it is, okay. So there's your diode. This is easily a one amp diode here. Uh, just kind of looking at it. It's, it's a one in 4004, so yeah, it, it, that's gonna be fine. So well, all I'm saying here, you can't reverse bias the thing. You plug the power in backwards, you're not gonna hurt it. Uh, you plug in 12, 15, 17 volts. Um, the LDO here is gonna get hot, but it's gonna still output five volts. So then we got this other LM117. Uh, that's your 3.3 volt. Mm, there's nothing on the back. Oh, you know what, I think U5. Yeah, I'm sorry. This is the 7805. Okay, so that is problematic, sorry. Undo all the stuff that, see I thought this was a 7805. This is the actual LM1117, which is a five to 3.3 volt LDO, it's U3, yep. Uh, okay, so this guy's gonna overheat if you exceed the voltage. So really what that means is, if you wanna run this thing at higher than 12 volts, the only thing you have to do is just change this out to another LM7805, like the T220 case. You can just unsolder that. Stick a TO220 in there. Now with the screen, uh, there's gonna be some mechanical um, consideration at least. You can see as the screen comes down that, that you're gonna run out of room there, but you can very easily kind of fold this cap over and then put a TO220 in there. The TO220 will take up to 21 volts maybe, and it's been many years since I looked at the 7805 because I don't recommend designing it or anything. So anyway, whatever, yeah, yeah, okay. We have uh, an inductor out to the five volt rail there. I don't like it when people do that. They got a big 100 megafarad cap. It, it just, you're adding an instability, but whatever. They've made whatever. Okay, there's actually a jumper to disconnect. Uh, where's JP4? Jumper four, where are you? It's probably up here somewhere. I don't see it. Not labeled on the back. Yeah, well, there are some JPs over in the back. Uh, I think it's just a cuttable. I don't see it. Sorry, but anyway, it's it's a, a method of testing the supply itself. So again, at the end of the day, I, I could get an LDO off of here. Um, the mic, the screen, the cable. My goodness, twenty bucks. It's insane. This is. Wow, okay, so here's your V plus, and here's, yeah, here's our switcher. Uh, so we have a transistor. Is it controlled by the microcontroller? It is, sure enough, V gen right there. So that's where we're generating our pulse here, which is, yeah, just turning on this simple switcher uh, mechanism here. You have your uh, actual negative generation here, and then, okay, so there, it's kind of unregulated, of course. They're, they're not actually measuring the feedback here. Oh, they are, look, V-monitor. So look, they're generating, they do have some kind of on, and then they're using another little LDO, the 7905. So the 7905 is the negative five volt output regulator. So they are actually using an LDO. This is impressive. JYE tech at gmail.com. That's, 
I have not even turned this thing on. I could turn this on and it could say, hey, you need to program me. Like, go ahead and just write the code. And for 20 bucks, think about it. You could build this into a product as it is and have, uh, you know, a, a screen on it. And you could get rid of all the gain and calibration. If you wanted to redesign this, you could take their exact code. You could take the chip. You could even, if you didn't, you could just buy <laughs> the board, take their Atmel chip off. They're not using an Atmel. Take their STI chip off, drop it down on your own board, you know, steal their screen for 20 bucks. My God. But again, like, wow. I'm amazed. I want to figure out what J9 is too. Sorry, because um, it's got a little header there. It's probably a battery powered, would be my guess. So let's see over here. Is there a J9? There is. Okay, so J9 and J10 are basically connected. Actually, not basically. They are connected together. Um, so you can you could even plug your 12 volts in here, 9 volts in here, and then you know pull, power something else off of here. Yeah. No battery here. I mean, yes, you could put a battery here between 5 and 12 volts, uh, higher 5.7, 6, maybe 6 and 12 volt. Um, and power it, but you wouldn't want to be plugged in at the same time because you would be unregulatedly charging the battery. Wow, okay, 20 minutes for the first part, but this is absolutely amazing. Uh, we'll, we'll power it up here. The desk color will change. I was so excited to get this this morning just because, gosh, for 20 bucks, I was so happy to be let down by a product. You know, my, the, the products that I designed, the oscilloscope, of course, they had accuracy, NIST, blah, blah, blah. They were multiple channels and synchronized, whatever. But they were, you know, 30, 40, 50, up to $100,000 for an oscilloscope. Um, you know, $20, you could buy 5,000 of these for one oscilloscope that my company sold. Now, of course, the bandwidth, that, they actually don't ever list their specifications here, and I didn't even care when I found it. Uh, uh, maybe they do, yep. I skipped the whole back of this page. Uh, we thought we were done. Sorry, I'm very long-winded. Okay, so they have the picture here. Now, the, it, I was a little confused initially because I was like, oh, that seems like a BNC is on there, but it's, it's of course plugged in this picture. So there's our connector for the probe. Oscilloscope mode, you know, whether or not you're acquiring the position. Um, I don't think... Do they list your, oh, okay, so this is just in the memory. I, from my memory, this has very, very low memory, like 2,000 points or something, we'll look at it. Trigger level readout, so that's where we triggered. Again, that's just uh, an op amp hooked up to an, uh, oh, interesting. So it's saying, the, oh no, no, that's just what you have the trigger level set to, because look, if you look right here, uh, we don't actually read the, the voltage here. We only see that, yes, in fact, we did or did not trigger. This output is either high or low. PWM, yeah, they're using a PWM. I guess this doesn't have a DAC output. And then they just have a first order low pass filter um, that's making this DC-ish. And that way they can control where the trigger level is. So that's actually gonna be problematic because of, because of this oscillation. I will, I'll probe this signal somewhere else. You'll see that there's gonna be quite a bit of ripple on this, which is gonna be adding quite a bit of jitter. So if you wanted to um, reduce the jitter on this board, you could actually come in here and make this a pi filter instead. So you'd obviously need a resistor here because otherwise you'd burn this pin out driving straight into a capacitor. But you could just take another R16, so another 100K and another 100 uh, nanofarad and just put them in series again. And that would give you a, a second order, which would be much, much, much better. So I imagine we're gonna see quite a bit of jitter on this and we can we can actually program on that. Okay, connector for power, connectors for power supplies. They do know there's two of them. Man, I should have read this first. Uh, buttons, uh, there's your trigger, indicate that it's got an LED for that. And I saw that, that's cool. It's red here, it's green there, whatever. I, you know, I think a green trigger makes more sense. Uh, they should, coupling, couple, okay. Eight to 12 volts, they say. So, I mean, the the LM7805, again, I have to pull the data sheet up on it, but I think, it, I think it's dropout range at, you know, the 100 milliamps this thing's gonna pull or less. I think it's less than a volt. So I think you could get away with six volts. They say eight volts, whatever. I'm not gonna argue with that. You know, I'll plug a nine volt battery into it. It'll work until that battery is probably down to six volts, so. 
Okay, we got a probe. Power supply voltage must not exceed 12 volts again because you'll overheat the LM7805. Right, right. Uh, I keep putting my screen back on it. But anyway, the little, if you, the part I mentioned earlier, if you change it to, to uh, TO220, it would never overheat and you can put it to maybe 20 or 21 volts. All right. Allowed maximum signal input is 50 volts peak to peak with the clip probe. Um, that's, again, I mean, this is not a 10 to 1, this is a 1 to 1 probe, so they are attenuating it here. So, yeah, 50 volts peak to peak. They don't actually say that it's bipolar there. So typically you'd say 50 volts peak. Uh, well, I'm sorry, it's 100 volts peak to peak. Again, because they generate that negative rail, this is probably a plus or minus 50 volt digitizer. Okay, operations, uh, yeah, zero line, no, this is normal. Yeah. We've got the probe calibration there. We black clip unconnected, that's kind of what we deduced earlier. Connect red, yep, okay. Not enough, too much, they're just talking about compensation there, you know, you don't want to over undershoot. Uh, turn on, off, readouts, triggers, and their modes. Auto, normal, single. We've got 200 kilohertz of analog bandwidth, so this is going along with its uh, one mega sample aggregate per second. So th that A, when you see it in there, means someone is lying to you. So they probably copied this directly from the uh, data sheet. I would suspect that because it's one mega sample that um, this is this is probably a delta sigma ADC, and because they say aggregate here, there's only one channel. So typically, what one mega sample aggregate per second would mean is that if you have four channels and you're only using one of them, when one channel is on, then you'd get one mega sample per channel per second. Uh, whereas if you're using two channels, you get 500 kilo samples per channel per second, and if you're using all four channels, you'd be getting 250 kilo samples per second per channel. Um, so there's only one channel, so this A kind of worries me because it might mean this samples at say 500 kilohertz so that it can sample these other ADC inputs uh, for the, uh, well the trigger is probably an interrupt, but they also are measuring vSense 1 and 2, so the power supply vSense, they gotta be doing, uh, well there's a VMOD as well, what are we vSensing again? Let's see, I don't see where those are. V since one and two. Okay, so these are um, AV plus. Uh, we have CPL select as well. So these are all on the AC. So we have V since one, two, CPL select. We have three test points, one of which is V monitor, which is for the, the negative rail uh, unregulated output, uh, and then test SIG, um, which is probably the one kilohertz thing, but I don't, yeah. Test sig, well there's test sig again. Where do we generate test sig? Oh, okay, that's an output. We're generating that test signal output. Uh, I guess. I guess, yeah, that's where she goes. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, we have five channels in view. I'm hoping this isn't 500 kilohertz, which it might be, I mean, because the analog bandwidth is only 200 kilo samples, uh, I'm sorry, 200 kilohertz. They're probably uh, measuring an ADC uh, channel and then, I'm sorry, the actual digitizer channel and then they're going and measuring one of the onboard signals and then they come back. So they basically keep ping-ponging between the data you care about and one of the several other analog to digital converters, which would make sense if there are 500 kilo samples per second that you'd have 200 kilohertz of analog gamma. I, we'll, we'll see, we can test that. Uh, sensitivity range uh, is 10 millivolts per div to five. So yeah, uh, max input voltage is 50 volts peak. Input resolution 20 peak. Resolution 12 bits, eh, probably not. Uh, maybe, uh, so this would suggest that they're using a, a SAR. You know, a lot of these STI microprocessors have multiple ADCs, so they'll have um, a successive approximation ADC, which they might be using here, which would be my guess. Uh, and then they'll have, uh, you know, a delta, high speed delta sigma that they then uh, digitally down convert. Uh, record link, yeah, so 100, 1,024 points. So this does not have any deep memory. Uh, even the, the, the 1054Z has 20 million points. This has 1,000. 
So you're not going to be able to look back after a trigger, but if you get your trigger working well, then you don't need to. Time base, 500 seconds per division. Wow. 10 microseconds. This could be really nice. 500 seconds per division means across the screen here, uh, you have, what do they have? One, two, three, four, five. So pretty standard. You could, gosh, you could record for an hour. So you say you have a DC signal and you want to just monitor what it does over an hour. I mean, you're only going to monitor... You know, the screen's only 400 pixels. It only store a thousand points, but it'll log every, you know, 30 seconds for an hour or whatever, whatever the math works out to. That's a that's a really neat thing. That man, that's cool. That's faster than a lot of. I'm sorry, longer than a lot of scopes can can handle. We got trigger position range. I don't know what that means. Maybe it'll 50%. Maybe that's from like 25% to 75%. So you can't trigger on the high end. That would make sense because of the I'm looking here at this off you know, uh, maybe it's not a rail to rail I mean but look they're plus and minus I, I think that yeah that's probably what it is is that they just can't use the high end I don't I don't even know what that means uh, power supply 9 so 8 to 12 so yeah they just want you to plug a 9 volt battery in 120 milliamps that's higher than I would have thought I said 100 uh, 70 grams without probe Okay, so there we go, there's part one, 31 minutes. I'm not gonna edit this down, sorry, I don't know, that's 20 bucks, I'm just trying this thing out.